So as you guys know, the new update recently came out, and I want to hook you guys up with the top five best class setups for Warzone 2 after update 1.13. So we're going to start out with one of my personal favorites, which is going to be the TAC-56. Now, surprisingly enough, this is actually not the best overall weapon, but it is a fantastic weapon that anybody can use and do incredibly well with. Also, I don't know if I'm tripping, but I feel like the brightness on Orion camo actually improved. Make, like, I feel like the color is a little bit better. What do you guys think? Check this out and tell me what you guys think. But we are starting out with the Harbinger D20 muzzle. This increases the bullet velocity, sound suppression, damage range, and recoil smoothness at the cost of aim down sight speed, aiming stability, and aim walking speed. Now, we increase the bullet velocity by 0.81 inches, and then we increase the recoil smoothness by 0.54 ounces. Move on to the 17.5 Tundra Pro Barrel. We increase the damage range, hip fire accuracy, and bullet velocity at the cost of aim down sight speed and hip recoil control. Now we maxed out the damage range and increased the recoil steadiness by 0.35 pounds. Move on to the FSS Combat Grip, and this helps with the recoil control and aiming stability. We increased the aiming idle stability by 0.35 inches and increased the recoil steadiness by 0.55 ounces. Put on the 60 round mag and then put on the 5.56 high velocity ammunition. As you guys see, this helps the bullet velocity at the cost of damage range. So we actually increased the damage range by 0.61 Gs. At that point, it doesn't help anymore. And then we maxed out the bullet velocity because it's effective all the way through. To show you guys how good this thing is, it's actually incredible. So we're gonna let this thing line up and check this thing out. Literally zero recoil at any range. And the great thing about this is it has pretty good mobility as well. So it's not like you just have to stand still when you use this weapon. It's actually a fantastic weapon. You can move around if the enemy's trying to actually like flank you or anything along those lines. But obviously it is the absolute best when you're standing still. It's a fantastic build and you don't even have to mount, but when you do mount, this thing is even crazier. Like as you guys see, this thing has zero recoil when mounted and low recoil when you're not mounted. Next, we're moving on to the RPK, and this is pretty much everyone's favorite weapon, in my opinion. Like, I see everybody using an RPK, but I don't really see everybody using this version. So, we're going to start out with the Polar Fire S. This helps with the sound suppression, bullet velocity, damage range, and recoil smoothness at the cost of aim down sight speed and aiming stability. We increase the bullet velocity at 0.32 inches and the recoil smoothness by the same amount. Put on attack. 597 barrel. This helps with damage range, hip fire accuracy, movement speed, and bullet velocity at the cost of hip recoil control, aim down sight speed, and recoil control. We increase the damage range by 0.26 inches and the recoil steadiness by 0.27, so they're around the same as well. Put on the aim op V4, change the far eye position to negative 1.65 inches. Put on the demo X2 grip. This helps with the recoil control at the cost of aiming stability. Don't change the width, but change the weight to plus 0.74 ounces for recoil steadiness. And last but not least, the 7.62 high velocity rounds. Once again, this helps the bullet velocity at the cost of damage range. Max out the bullet velocity and increase the damage range by 0.43 Gs. After that, it actually doesn't benefit anymore. I'll show you guys, this thing has zero recoil and great damage. Check this out. The lack of effort I have to actually put in to use this weapon is incredible. I think that's why a lot of people like to use it. And the reload speed is actually pretty decent for an LMG. So, in my opinion, this one is pretty much ideal just for somebody that doesn't really want to try too hard. I mean, if you just want to be able to aim, shoot, take the enemy down, then, I mean, this is probably the overall best bet for you if you don't want to really have a challenge. Now, if you do want to have a challenge, then the number one weapon is for you. The mini box is a heavily slept on weapon, and I think it's actually incredible because you can take out entire teams with just one mag. We're going to start out with the X10 RR40 for the sound suppression, bullet velocity, damage range, and recoil smoothness at the cost of aim down sight speed and aiming stability. Now, we maxed out the damage range and increased the recoil smoothness by 0.45 ounces because at that point, I saw no more benefit. Put on the Bach 9 279mm barrel for the damage range, hip fire accuracy, and bullet velocity at the cost of aim down sight speed and hip recoil control. Now we max out the damage range and aim walking speed, which is going to surprise some people. This thing already has a pretty good recoil pattern. We got a playlist update, but anyway, put on the Schlager Peck box for aim down sight speed increase. The Markeep R7 stock for the crouch movement speed, sprint speed, and aim down sight speed at the cost of recoil control. And then I maxed out the aiming out stability 2.40 inches. 
and then the weight is negative 1.94 ounces for aim down sight speed. Put on the true tack grip for sprint to fire speed and aim down sight speed at the cost of recoil control and increase the recoil steadiness by 0.52 ounces. So just to show you guys how great this thing is. I mean, this thing has such little recoil that the close range fights are very easy to handle. It's when you get to long range fights that are kind of dicey like that. So in my opinion, plus the reload speed is incredible, is you want to stick to the short to medium range. And then for long range, if you absolutely have to use this weapon, just burst fire. Like otherwise, you're going to be in a heap of trouble. Stick to the short to medium range and you'll do really good. Anybody that's been watching, you guys know these are the top two weapons in Warzone 2 right now. And this is number one when this is number two. I mean, they are both number one in their respective categories, but these are the setups you guys are going to need to absolutely dominate Warzone. If you don't want to use any of the other three, trust me, these two are vital. So we're going to start with number two, which is the Fennec. Now, we put on the ZLR 16.5 ignition barrel, and we increase the damage range by 0.25 inches, and the recoil steadiness by 0.50, or basically max that out. It helps with the damage range bullet velocity, hip fire accuracy, and recoil control at the cost of aim down sight speed, hip recoil control, and movement speed. Put on the VLK Laser 7MW. Increases the aim down sight speed, aiming stability, and sprint to fire speed at the cost of the laser being visible in ADS. Keep that in mind while you're ADSing this gun. They do see the laser. Agile Assault 7 stock. Top sprint fire speed, aim down, well, aim walking speed, crouch movement speed, and aim down sight speed at the cost of aiming stability and recoil control. So I maxed out the aiming out stability, 2.40, and then I increased the aim down sight speed by negative 2.06 ounces. Fennec rubber grip. Now this helps sprint to fire speed and aim down sight speed at the cost of recoil control. So I increased the recoil steadiness by 0.42 ounces. And last but not least, I put on the Fennec Mag 45. To show you guys the product of this thing, it's absolutely incredible. Literally no recoil, like from short to medium range. And then for long range, you're going to have to burst fire just because you're not going to have much luck. Shooting regular, it's just going to be way too inconsistent from long range. But short, medium range, absolutely incredible. This is what happens when you do long range. It's going to be a situation like that. See how I ran out of bullets? Not really optimal. You're going to pretty much need your entire mag. Just to almost guarantee you get that kill. It's, it's not really the best choice to stick this to long range. Keep it to short to medium range, you're gonna do a good job. Remember, long range is burst fire, you'll have much better luck. And last but not least, the TAC V. This is the juggernaut of all weapons in Warzone 2 right now. This thing hits so hard. We have the Custovia DX90, helps with the sound suppression, bullet velocity, recoil smoothness, and recoil control at the cost of aim down sight speed, aim walking speed, and aiming stability. Now, we increase the bullet velocity by 0.84 inches and increase the recoil smoothness by 0.90 ounces. Put on the 18 inch precision six barrel, helps the damage range, hip fire accuracy, and bullet velocity at the cost of aim down sight speed and hip recoil control. I maxed out the damage range at 0.40, increased the recoil steadiness at 0.39 pounds. Moving on from that, put on the aim op V4, max out the far range by negative 1.65 inches. And then I move on to the 50 round drum. There's a 30 round option, which basically makes you more mobile, but in my opinion, you want more bullets, as many bullets as possible with this build, especially since it's a heavy hitter. I mean, I think it'd be really good to have one there. If you have the 30 round, it'll feel more like attack 56 in regards to mobility, but I don't really think you need that. Last but not least, we have the FTAC Ripper, F -TAC Ripper 56. It's also aiming out of stability, hip fire accuracy, and recoil stabilization at the cost of aim down sight speed and walking speed. I increased the aiming idle stability by 0.23 inches, and the recoil stabilization is maxed out at 0.80 ounces. To show you how amazing this thing is, check this thing out. You don't even have to really try that hard. This thing has very little recoil as it is. Like, at the very long distance, you see a little more recoil, but in my opinion, short to medium range, you don't really notice the recoil that much. So it's a fantastic build, and if you don't really want to handle the long range recoil, all you have to do is mount. So I'm just going to show you guys how it feels to actually mount this weapon. It literally, like, it doesn't feel like there's any recoil regardless. So, if you want to mount this gun, completely fine. But I think the recoil is controllable enough to where you can literally use this short to medium range and long range if it's absolutely necessary. You can still get the job done. So, that's my top five. Let me know in the comment section which one of these guns are your favorite in the top five category. And let me know some recommendations down below what you guys want me to cover next.